Hey YouTube, Vil here with another stream recap. So on this one, Topon goes through the very early FTF discography. We hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, if you have any questions, yeah. just hit the comment section below. Thanks for all the support and see you uh, next time. Cheers. Um, yeah, so yeah, okay. let me kind of... I've been going through this in my head and it's just a really complicated thing to... It's a really... <laughs> I don't know, it's a really interesting thing for me to talk about because this band has basically been, you know, a huge part of my life for more than half of my life now. Uh, and there's a lot to take in. And I think like, you know, like a lot of people probably know when I when I started doing this, um, the idea was just that I wanted to make music and make music without any limitations. And as we get into this stuff, you'll kind of really hear that, you know, especially if you only got into Fuck the Facts, say like, you know, the Stigmata High Five, Discourge Mexico, where we kind of like stabilized maybe a little bit more as, you know, a grindcore metal band. In the early days, it was much more all over the place you know there was a lot of noise shit there was like a lot of crazy experimenting um and it all started back in like around um 96 97 so here i'm gonna dive into the beginning and and when i opened the box and i started going through all the fuck the facts shit i was like i can't really talk about fuck the facts if i don't take it a step like one step back from that and it's actually a band that i was in called uh kuru with a couple of buddies of mine brent and jay and brent would actually become uh the first vocalist of fuck the facts who who sang on mullet fever and stuff so kuru is the first band that i played in i kind of I grabbed a couple of things here Let's see if i can show this you guys can see it there's a band picture so this is say Bring it uh, up a bit. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. Yeah. So that's 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 me. <laughs> that's me. Uh, that's Brent. That's Jay. And right in between us, that's the drum machine that we used. <laughs> uh, who we named Doc? We named that guy Doc because he was a Doctor Rhythm. Uh, and yeah, so that's kind of where it started. Here's. Here's a, a photo of us playing live with the drum machine. Uh, this is a bit later on. You can't see it, but uh, in the back is uh, a drum machine. It's a Roland uh, R8, I think, maybe. Uh, I still have that drum machine, actually. And we named that guy Raleigh. Um, but with those guys, it's like really kind of when I... Uh, got into, I guess, like, you know, the release with them. Here's the very first release we did, actually. Yeah, you uh, see that? Yeah. See that a bit? I'll try it. Yeah. yeah Human right. innards strewn about. So it was kind of like a, a gory death metal thing, you know, like cheap. <laughs> <laughs> like... Perfect. And this, uh, yeah, this was done uh, 1995. And you can see 1995, I had a little uh, label that I called Dead Fuck Records. And uh, I released a bunch of stuff from a bunch of different bands and obviously my own bands as well. So that's the first, uh, that's the first recording that we did back. Actually, we did in August 10th. 1995 we did that in the stupid hot room it was this little house i lived in in uh, beechwood in ottawa and it was just really hot and we called it the stupid hot room um and that's kind of that's kind of where it started we did that and then we did this we did a second release called uh let's make magic it's kind of fun i always like that cover great titles yeah, you know, and this, a lot of this is like Brent, like Brent uh, and, and Jay too, like just had like a real sense of humor to this, to this shit. And we did a, a split. This was actually a really fun split that we did uh, with a couple of like noise bands. Actually, it was a four way split. So three other noise bands. Uh, but we ended up doing a cover of uh there it is yeah 
you can see that. Yeah, Rapper's Delight, <laughs> which I'm sure everyone at some point in their life has heard the song Rapper's Delight. And it's actually uh, like a 12 minute song. And uh, we did we did the whole thing. We played we played all 12 minutes of it on this recording with a bunch of uh, noise bands. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That's so that's where it started. Let me let me see if I can go through some other stuff here. And this is like when I first started. You know, so these bands. We started tape trading. I started sending out flyers and stuff. Uh, we played a show at a venue in Ottawa. I'm sure some people out there will remember. It was called Bumpers. Oh yeah, remember Jeez, on Bank Street. Now I think it's now I think it's uh, the Works. Works. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we played a show there and we made a split out of it. We actually had a lot of really cool shows there back in the day. Um, and yeah, the Amsanglant guys, Disgruntled, was like a punk band, and we made this live this live tape from it uh and yeah the shit was just the shit was just super fun to do back then man it's like there was no photoshop it was literally just cutting shit out and going to the going to the whatever gas station to like make photocopies and and just paste this this stuff all together and shrink shrink stuff and make it bigger i actually like anyone that lives in Anyone that lives in Gatineau, uh, there's a gas station. It's still there. It's at the corner of uh, Saint René and um, ah, what the fuck? Saint René. Okay, I, I won't. Anyways, there's a gas station there. <laughs> I can't help you. I don't know. Uh, Labrosse. Saint René and Labrosse. Okay. You know where that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? St. René and Labrosse, there's a gas station there, and that's the gas station I actually used to go to and always make my photocopies. So, you know, all this stuff. Um, so, yeah, there was that split, and that's when we started, like, trading shows. There's, this is a little kind of, like, B-sides thing we did for Kuru. You did way more stuff uh, than I thought you did with, with Kuru. Yeah, we did a lot, man. Like, considering it was, uh, you know a short-lived project in a way like i don't know man like back then i don't know we were probably around like two years felt like 20 years yeah you know you know, even around like 20 years it feels like two years like it's that's how time works right um and then we did we did one last album which was this guy actually let me take the cover out and <laughs> the album the album was called uh, hooray for vaginas <laughs> and that's <laughs> what's a playing of... right now <laughs> There's a lot of weird stuff. And actually, I remember being at uh, Jay's house. Here's a CDR uh, we burnt. I mean, it's really weird looking at yourself like this. Um, yeah, we were, and, and back then, you could only burn CDRs at like one times the speed. Like CDRs were like a new thing. Now you can oh, burn like yeah. a 80 minute CD in like eight seconds, right? <laughs> back then, it was like the whole thing. Um, had to play yeah just like stupid crap dedicated the album to G jesus where is um, that show where's that photo from this photo yeah uh was the live one it's well i just showed it i showed the yeah. actual photo and we used it in the album but I was wondering uh, it where... was just some how it was just some house show oh, that okay. we played um and you know back then there wasn't really like grindcore bands like this is even before like bands like um organized chaos and the donner party like before before uh the whole like or orleans scene kind of happened like we were doing this drum machine thing and we were playing with you know basically punk bands and hardcore yeah. bands uh that were cool enough to kind of like accept us uh into the scene so yeah kuru, kuru is like really i think what what got me going and like doing tape trading and sending shit out to um to different people and just kind of like starting to you know interact and do stuff and i had like the dead fuck records thing going on um and then at some point i started putting out i put out a compilation called um the only the only good human being is a dead one so it's this it was kind of 
Yeah, I was an angry child. The only <laughs> good human being. It's a dead one. So very. That's very actually <clears throat> it's actually taken from uh, Animal Farm. Mm. For anyone out there that reads books, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, on this compilation, actually, is there's a whole bunch of really cool local bands from back in the day that some of you might be old enough to remember. There's crab webs actually on there. And Paul recently passed away. Uh, really awesome one man punk band. Um, a lot of really cool stuff. Nihility. Nihility is, is on there actually. Jay passed away recently too. Uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff on this. Uh, but this is the very first time that Fuck the Facts was on something. And I released it myself. So it was a song called skull drudgery and uh we're gonna i guess we're gonna get to that because that's kind of when i guess the the guys in kuru were kind of getting out of the music thing and i was just getting started even though you know i think i was probably like two or three years older than those guys um but yeah i was just like getting going and and fuck the facts is kind of like um the next thing we jumped into how old was I back then? Uh, say 20-ish, something like that. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, because I was like 10. Yeah, Nihility. Yeah, 99. Well, I would have been, so I was like, yeah, my early 20s. Yeah, early 20s when this all kind of was going on. Maybe, uh, no, actually, maybe late teens, early 20s, the whole, like, Kuru era. Uh, and yeah, so then, so that's kind of when we jumped into, uh, fuck the facts shit. Let me just clear this stuff away. Oh, actually, wait, there was one more, one more compilation I did. Similarly, after that, uh, I like this one, too. It's called, uh, Be Prepared to Lose Everything. <laughs> these like comic book guys. These like they still look like yeah. really good. They're still like super awesome. Thanks. I spent a lot of time on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and back there, like you can even see. Actually, you know, this was this was kind of a this was kind of a fun thing because as I was going through all this stuff, and as we get later into kind of like the discography, I was trying to figure out. Well, I don't leak your address because sometimes. <laughs> this address doesn't exist anymore, so you can't even find it. You can't even find this place. But that's so. Sometimes I would figure out. Uh, sometimes I would figure out when the release was just by looking. Okay, where the hell did I live? So this is a place that this address doesn't exist. This was my dad's house, uh, where I did all the original recordings and stuff. And uh, but yeah, they changed the street name. The place still exists actually, but uh, the address is different now. Uh, so yeah, let me put I'll put this stuff away, and then I think we'll we'll jump into the uh, jump into the actual fuck the fact stuff here. Hopefully, this is uh, what does Kuru mean? It's like a disease I think you get from eating brains. <laughs> See, we get to learn something yeah. too. Pretty good. Yeah, the band actually the band actually existed before I joined, and they were called uh, Nazi Occupied, which is like not a great band name for like numerous reasons um so they changed it uh and uh not that I, no one in the band was nazis obviously <laughs> maybe I should have kept that to myself but uh yeah let me jump into the next part we're doing good i don't know if anyone else oh, yeah. switch the music accordingly. Same drummer, though. Sorry? So I, I switched the music, but it sounds like it's the same drummer. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, huh? That's, so that, that drum... So not only did I, like, you know, well, Kuru disbanded, but I also took the drummer with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think... I posted this recently. It's hard to see because I wrote it in pencil. I don't want to write over it. But basically, this is the very first thing that I ever did 
uh, which would eventually become Fuck the Facts. And it just it's just called Grindtastic. I don't know if it's going to... It's hard to see it. Yeah, it's hard to see. It looks like it's been through hell, though. Yeah, actually, this tape always looked like shit. <laughs> I, at, at one point, uh, me and my brother... Uh, got a whole bunch of tapes like this probably for like something like you know creative tapes oh, for like ten dollars yeah. and we bought them all so anyway I don't know yet. Yeah, you can't really see it maybe kind of no uh, it's just a focus on the camera yeah focus motherfucker <laughs> uh, uh, uh. yeah no it's not wanting to yeah no yeah no okay anyway <laughs> So this is the very first recording. I have another one of these that's actually the the actual four track recording um, that I that I did it on. So this is ninety this is ninety seven. I didn't call it fuck the facts. It was just like I was starting to get into grindcore um, because of a radio show that I did, and uh, the guy before me he was kind of like a hardcore grind. It was called hardcore back then, like bands like agents of satan and plutocracy and um you know dystopia and all this stuff was was kind of what i was getting into and that's kind of like a big influence uh i dig up this is this was a staged photo but this is basically the setup i kind of used uh back then so there's there's a couple of drum machines that i had is that a black pod? thing that, no is that that's a, a what no, there oh, was no pods, mask. man. It's a, <laughs> it's a four track. It's a that's some pedal. It definitely wasn't a tuner because <laughs> I don't think I ever tuned. Um, obviously, if you listen to the recordings, uh, there's a wah pedal for some reason. Um, so Probably that solos. that's kind of like how I did the the uh, the first sort of recordings. Um, and let's see, uh, kind of how I should get into this. So yeah, so so that's kind of basically the beginning of of fuck the facts before fuck the facts. So there was the grindtastic recording. At the time, I was still playing in like a bunch of uh, local death metal bands, and that was kind of like my main focus, you know. So it was more later on, like around maybe ninety eight, ninety nine, that I started doing uh, more fuck the facts recordings, and. A lot of those recordings that I would do and I would I would send out to people. So I'm doing all my tape trading and shit while this is going on. Uh, ended up being this tape, which is like this is this is I guess what some people call the first album sometimes. Yeah, uh, title. Which is always that's always that's always a like I, I think I listed it as a demo or maybe it was a promo or whatever. It's a funny thing about us too, right? Like even when we just released the last album, like sometimes I'll go and I'll read like a, a review and they're like, fuck the facts, like 12th album. And then other reviews like, fuck the facts, eighth album. You know, like no one has any idea how many albums we've released. And I don't even know because um, the discography is so confusing. Uh, so yeah, this ended up being the first thing. So, and I basically com compiled a bunch of different recordings. So there you can kind of see the track listing. Uh, there's that address again. Uh, there is, I don't think you'll be able to see it super well, but here's kind of the, the dates that when things were recorded. It's all like separate sessions. Yeah, it was always separate sessions, yeah. like, you know, so, uh, yeah, the January session, and then there was uh, November 98, December 98, January 99, April 99, May 99, June 99, August 99, September 99. So it was like, I did fuck the facts, but obviously I had other shit going on in my life. I had like a job and I was playing in other bands and I was just like a young guy, so... It wasn't really like the focus of my life. It was just like, hey, I'm gonna go to my dad's place for the weekend and record a bunch of grindcore songs. And that's kind of what ended up being, you know, fuck the facts. And this is like the very first tape uh, that we released. Fuck all ripoffs. <laughs> Cause that was, a, that was a thing back then. Oh, and actually look at this. 
I totally forgot about this, but this is like the early days of computers. I didn't have one. So this email address is actually was my dad's email. So I guess people would have to email my dad who worked at Carleton University with the subject dead fuck. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if he ever got any emails about that. <laughs> if he did, he probably wouldn't have uh, he probably wouldn't have sent them to me. Uh, but yeah, actually, my dad was super cool, obviously. So, th so that's the first tape. So that's kind of like what got the ball rolling. Oh, and actually, this picture is, I have the picture here. It's this picture. This is, that's me. And my, uh, my mom took this picture of me. <laughs> this is like a mask that I got uh, when I was in India. Uh, I think this mask is actually somewhere at the ink spot, if I remember it correctly i think i i left this mask with sean and it was hanging up at the ink spot i haven't been there in years though so not sure what's going on but uh yeah so that was the the first thing and like the other photo like it was just i think i think i was like oh this is gonna maybe be my thing i'm like the mask guy i'm gonna be like bucket head or something you know um yeah the one but the it one got, man grind band with a mask yeah machine. but it's cool actually if you look at the if you look at the cover my mom actually went over it and she kind of like made it look like a drawing oh yeah really awesome that's yeah, really awesome um so yeah that was the very first fuck the facts thing uh that i put out uh and this this is like when i started getting on compilations so this is this is a thing. I'm sure I'm sure there's some people out there that are you know this is still a thing now. This is actually I think even has like a bit of a revival. This kind of like, but this is this was like the first compilation that I was on with like obviously like a mazillion other bands, and I was pretty stoked, man. When I got this in the mail, I was like, whoa, this dude from where the hell was this guy from? France. This dude from France. Put my stuff in this compilation. It was pretty wicked. That's well, pretty crazy, you know, because it's all pre inter well, not pre internet, but like the internet wasn't even close to where it is today, especially for like sharing music and, and getting your band known. So that was, no. that was kind of like the way to do it. And it would, yeah, and it would it, actually it, have an impact. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, oh, I emailed him the tracks. And you know, like a couple, yeah. like he's like keeping me posted. It's like I send someone something, and then like maybe four months later or six months later, I get a a package in the mail, and it's like, oh, it's that compilation that I'm on. Uh, so yeah, that was the first thing that I did, and it was from that kind of grindtastic, uh, grindtastic session, uh, which is, yeah, which was really cool. Uh, let me see what else kind of happened after that. There's a lot of stuff going on, man. This is probably the next thing I did was this was a, a split with a band from Japan called um, Long Dream Dead. And check out that logo. It's my next tattoo. Like it, yeah, it's an amazing logo. You can tell I went to art school, right? Like, obviously, <laughs> I know a lot. Like, that's <laughs> that's that's. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, I did this, and actually, it was the same guy that put it out. This guy from Abhorrent Creation it was oh. really cool back in the really? day. It's that guy. You remember him? Well, yeah, I remember the band for sure. Yeah. Uh, was it a band? This is like Abhorrent Creation tapes. Oh. Uh, no, I'm thinking. There's a picture else. of me, there's a picture of me there sitting. Been really cool. Uh, yeah. So that I think was was probably one of the the first first split tapes that I did uh, and and material that I recorded for this split so you know before that like it's more just like I released um, the, the recordings I had already done but this was kind of done for this split uh, but then it ends up on on the uh, the first like self-titled release so it's kind of like a reoccurring theme. Like I would release stuff on splits, but then I would also release it on my own just to kind of make sure that I got it out enough that I was going to be happy about it. Yeah. There's some, there's some good, I like, and song titles were, 
have always been my strong point. Some amazing stuff. There's one in there called Angry Ron. <laughs> you know Ron. I lived with Ron, who's actually the guitar player in Diamon. And we always just had a joke about how angry Ron is. Um, yeah, so he had this angry Ron guy. It was awesome. He actually wasn't really angry. Uh, so that was, I think, one of the first splits. Uh, then there's this Cult of the Damned split tape. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, Cult of the Damned. And look at that logo. I think I like that one even better. Can you see it? What? Kinda? Yeah. Is that the bottom? Yeah, it's the bottom one. Yeah, that can't. I, I saw it on, it on on the internet when I was looking for, for stuff like that. Yeah, that's the Fuck the Facts logo. Right? Yeah, that's a Fuck the Facts logo. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a, another split we did, or I did. There's actually a picture of me, again, <laughs> with crap all over my face. Uh, and there's a Cult of the Damned side. Bratislava? Huh. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, a lot of early stuff. Grind, grind Rot DIY. Um, it's funny, man. A lot of... I, I, at this time, I worked at uh, Copy 106. Woo! 106? That's actually a lot of... That's a lot of copies. Damn. Yeah. That's a lot of copies. Um... At this time, when I was doing this stuff, and here's actually another funny thing. That's the tape. Wait. <laughs> that's, that's the tape. I mean, you, at first you were thinking, hey, did they actually, like, pro, <laughs> pro press it? Nope. Nope. They just grabbed this, this, <laughs> this tape and, and dubbed it over it. Uh... Uh, so yeah, at this time I was working at Zeller's. I don't know. I'm sure enough people remember Zeller's, right? <laughs> I remember um, Zeller's. Yeah, you remember Zeller's. Like maybe I don't know. Maybe if there's any like 13 year olds out there, maybe they they don't remember Zeller's. But I'm sure most people from Canada would remember Zeller's. And uh, I would draw these fuck the facts logos on uh, receipts. Like I worked cash. And when no one was there, I would just like grab a receipt and I would draw like fuck the facts logos on the back of them. And then I would like go and photocopy them later. Uh, that's, that's why I have so many fuck the facts logos just because I was bored at work. Uh, I like the idea of having that. a logo per release. It's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's Spark there. Street Spark Street uh, Zellers. Yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty awesome. Um, let me see. There's a lot of stuff. I feel like maybe this was one of the the next things because this is this oh, yeah. is often considered, I think, the the second Fuck the Facts album. You see it, Vagina Dancer. Yeah. <laughs> Vagina Dancer. Oh my god. Uh, released released by this label, and this is like a straight up noise release. Oh, and there's another logo. I like this one. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I like that logo. Yeah, I like that logo. I think I used it a few times. I like that logo. That's definitely. I, I can remember drawing that one on a Zeller's receipt and cutting it up to put on this thing. So yeah, this is like this was like a straight up noise release. Basically, the label, you know, it is a lot of doing this stuff was just like I would be in touch with people, uh, and you know they would say, hey, we like you know you want to do a split or you want to do you know a release or something, and I was always like, yeah, of course I do, like you know, let's, let's do it. And if it was a noise thing, because noise was a big thing, and. Um, yeah, this was supposed to be a noise release. It wasn't. It wasn't like I was sitting. All right, time to put out my second album. It's just like here's the release. You know, there were no, there's no tour cycles, <laughs> uh, promo or anything like that. Like I'd make flyers and stuff. Uh, but it was cool. One one fun thing about but this one, I did a I did a cover of the Village People's Hot Cop on this. Which is basically just me like feeding the recording of of Hot Cop into like my four track and like putting like stupid amounts of distortion on it. Um, another fun thing actually is my mom did this cover. My mom's an That's artist. Awesome. 
yeah, she did this. It's kind of weird. Eh? I named a vagina dancer and I got my mom to do the cover. It's that's yeah. It's the actual tape. But yeah, that's probably I think one of the second releases I did uh, through that, and then Is starting that, to get. Uh, at that point, it was just tapes, right? You hadn't done like a, like a seven inch or anything like that. No, no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But no, at this point, it was just tapes, um, and mainly like compilations. And stuff like that. Uh, I've released, speaking of compilations, this is like another compilation that I released. And it was more more for like noise stuff. It was called Rise of the Robots. <clears throat> you can see Am Sanglat there's again. He was, a really, he was a really good friend back in the day. We did a lot of cool stuff together. Uh, Sanglat, I don't know. Outer, outermost from Japan uh, over there. That's another dude I did a bunch of stuff with. Um, and this was this was like an old recording. It's basically all like MIDI stuff. And actually, this this it's a song called 132 and the Evil Jesus. And uh, 132 was my my number when I was a bike courier. And I was a bike courier when I did this stuff. So I kind of just I don't know. It's based. In my head, it's based on like my experience as a bike courier, which was really short-lived, but allowed me to buy an eight-track eventually, with uh, all the time I spent as a bike courier. Ben, uh, Ben is asking if all all those are like the masters, or are those just all your copies? Yeah, they're all my copies. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like some of them might have been used as masters, but no, they're really just all my copies. I feel like I had separate masters and if might have them still somewhere, but, uh, but no, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where they are now. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I think, I don't know if I, I mentioned the 132 and evil Jesus song. I actually put that also as a bonus track on legacy of hopelessness. Oh yeah. Like if you put it in, you put it in your computer. Oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. This is fun, yeah. man. I don't know if anyone anyone remembers these kind of addresses. Oh, and this is also when I changed my label. So I was no longer Dead Fuck Records. I was now uh, Ghetto Blaster Recordings. Oh, yeah. And uh, actually, I think it was Matt Connell that helped me put together this website. But you used to be able to, like, if you're too poor to afford, like, a .com or a .org or whatever, yeah, yeah. you could get these, like, you know, get to... Uh, get two websites. Uh, I like how you mentioned Matt when killing Matt with alcohol is playing right now. <laughs> Perfect timing. A lot of cool stuff there. Napalmed. I don't know anyone that's anyone that's it was involved in the noise scene at all at some point would probably uh, reckon no Napalmed. He did a lot of stuff back in the day. Um, actually, that reminds me. Is it in here? Yeah, so there's that compilation. Let's see what else we got here. Actually, uh, the, C the C I had like a CD version of like select tracks of that first, uh, that first like Fuck the Facts release. And it's actually, I don't know, you remember Nate? I was telling you, he kind of like he made this for me, and he kind of oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess he kind of like ripped it, and he like remixed it, or or I guess he remastered it, yeah, yeah. And did something. It was really cool, which is kind of one of the reasons I was able to rip this stuff, and so so we can listen to it here. Uh, yeah, so that was that was that, and then let's see what else we got here. So then I think. This is when the band, with the band, this is when I'm getting kind of like more serious and, and more into it. And this is kind of, I think, around when I started doing uh, the splits with SMES, which, which are still probably oh, yeah. some of my favorite stuff 
from that era. Like, I feel like at this point is kind of when I, I'm, I managed to like, I don't know, figure out what I was doing <laughs> yeah. and actually, actually get decent at doing it. So this was, this was it. I don't know, man. Actually, my timeline might be a bit messed up because this is Dead Fuck Records. Oh, <clears> so I'm guessing, I'm guessing the uh, Rise of the Robots came out after this. Okay. Because this is still Dead Fuck Records. And look at that. Look at that website. Angel Fire. Oh, yeah. Anyone er, who remembers Angel Fire? Angel Fire, <laughs> GeoCities, Hotbot. Yeah. yeah. Angel Fire had a website, uh, and Zass. So Marco from Zass, who's actually still doing stuff. He's still doing stuff, and we did a lot of stuff together. Uh, yeah, same place in Gatno. DIY. Yeah, that was the so that was the first uh, split I did with SMES, and SMES is like a really different. It's kind of like like techno gore like industrial sort of stuff. So it was a weird fit, but I don't know, man, Ir Irwin's a really rad dude. And, uh, it was, it was really fun. And I really like how that, how that split turned out. I was really, really happy with that. Actually, it's funny. I listened back to some of this and there's like a lot of samples. And I think a lot of that had to do with, I had to come up with like a certain amount of music, like 20 minutes or something. And I was like, I can't write 20 minutes of music. That's like way too long. So like seven minutes of that is like samples, like a la mortician kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, I noticed uh, like listening back to a lot of stuff just, just for, you know, making sure that I had like enough music going on. And, and sometimes like some release, like half this, like each song is like a sample. And it's such a like an grindcore like early grindcore thing because i remember even like i would like i would I'd do the same thing with des actually that's in the chat right now and like other bands is like just just put as many samples as you could i don't know why it was like the coolest thing to do maybe samples were mm -hmm. harder to get back then <laughs> yeah it was and man the way i did it because this is before computers and like the samples on this this release so this is the SMES split and you can see there's that logo you can see it better oh yeah it's pretty that's sweet. A, we got to we should, we should bring that logo back yeah that should be our logo what the fuck are we doing next ep that's a way cooler logo <laughs> yeah angel angel fire angel fire punk 2 <laughs> let's let's buy that domain let's see if that's for sale <laughs> um um but a lot of the um the samples that I did on this are, are from, I think, I think it's this one that has samples from Dog Day Afternoon, which is an awesome oh, yeah. movie. I love that movie. There's the SMES side too, which is really cool. Um, but the way I did my samples is like, I didn't, like there was no computer or I didn't have a computer. So I literally had like a little hand recorder. I would go upstairs to like the TV just turn on the TV yeah. with my hand recorder next to it and I would just press record and I would flip <laughs> through the channels until something came on. And I ended up recording, I guess, a bunch of like dog day afternoon. But like that's where all of my samples came from uh, was just like because that's the only way I could do it. And like I was stoked. It was like, oh, if someone did, you know, someone said something cool on TV and now I can sample it. So I don't even know if I had like a, a, a VCR. If I did, I didn't have movies like <laughs> You know, this is like back when you had to go rent movies. Like people didn't, or like at least my family, we didn't own like a collection of movies. It was like, you have a VCR so you can go rent movies. Uh, so yeah, there was that split with SMES. Actually, yeah, I, I heard it on the Kuru recording. Like I can hear like... Yeah, the cheap quality? Well, the, well, I the, think the, the tracking of the samples. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of the samples in Kuru were, were definitely all Brent. Like that was that was Brent's thing for sure. So he might have ripped them from like other recordings and stuff. Um, I did a second split with SMES, which was really cool. I think this might be is this Marco as well that put this out. Uh, 
was this that put this out? Oh, Impregnate Records. I don't remember exactly who that was. Rotten Tooth production. Yeah, Marco was on this too. Rotten Tooth was like a cool, uh, I think from the Czech Republic. Uh, sorry, there's some stuff. Um, limited. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's fine actually to see. I mean, look at this. I limited, limited to 400 copies. Wow, that's pretty good. I wonder if they actually made 400. <laughs> I got, <laughs> I got 61. Um, but yeah, this is another split I was really happy with. I did a Oppressed Conscience cover on it. Uh, and I think this is probably getting close to when the band is coming because there's the song like Nazi Skin Smashed to Shit, which we ended up re-recording as an actual band. Um, and actually on the other SMES split, there's a song, there's a few songs on here I, that we actually played live as a band, like the song song released yeah i even played uh, that. and Ro roach and lack of imagination like those are so those are like originally there but those ended up being re-recorded as a band as well because we played those uh, uh probably a long time ago now but we did play roach and release mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah totally uh yeah they did this oh this one's this one's fun because i got my brother I got my brother to do vocals on it because my brother was like a really awesome death metal vocalist uh, at the time. He does not into that stuff at all anymore uh, in a band called Nefarious. Uh, I don't know if he was still in that band, but anyway, in Nefarious and Evolution Fail, my brother. So I got him to like, I was recording because I recorded my dad's place in the basement. And uh, I got my brother to come in. And it's funny because, like, you could tell he, like, still didn't want to do it. I was like, and I didn't give him any guidance. I was just like, just do something. And he just came down with, like, a bag of chips. And he just, like, I just hit record. And he just, like, took a big mouthful of chips and just said, mmm, chips. And that's, like, on the recording for some reason. I was like, good enough. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, extra vocals and chip eating. I don't know if he did any other, <laughs> any vocals. I have to listen to it again. But uh, yeah, it was, it's kind of like, all right, that's the best I'm gonna get from him. <laughs> and that actually chips that reminds me. Here, here's this. I was trying to find some old. There's not a lot of photos that I have of myself in that era, Ooh, but that's shit. one I found. Can you kind of see it? Oh yeah. So that's me, and behind me is a eight track. That's the eight track that I bought with uh, my bike courier money. Uh, uh, there's some NS10s. I bought NS10s like way back then. I still have those NS10s. Uh, and there's there is an old tape deck, and that's just that's just normal cola. I didn't even drink back then. I had to go on tour to become an alcoholic. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's like one. That's a photo of me back there in that in that era recording that stuff. Very flattering. Um, let's see what else we got here. So then, I think these are songs that I did for the SMES split, but were then released on a split with Yanni G from uh, Agathocles. Oh yeah, you have to do right? that. Yeah, it's the Yan AG side. I don't know if he still does this. I don't know if he still does the uh, Yan AG thing. I'm not sure. Or Agathocles. It's almost it's almost even weird that that was a thing, but I guess I guess it was a thing. Um, but yeah, that was kind of cool. So yeah, a few, you know, a few tracks would end up on the on the same like similar kind of like releases. Um. <clears throat> And uh, let's see what else we got after after that. So this is another split I did with a band called uh, Mastectomia. What? And what this year was is like, that? huh? What year is that? Uh, I don't know if it's written. This is probably around 99. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, 2000. Okay. So, yeah. It rings a yeah. bell. That's why I'm... Yeah. 
All tracks recorded at Total Bastard Studio uh, 2000. I did a Slayer cover. This was kind of actually, this sounds like way more kind of like death metal uh, than, uh, than the other recordings. This was yeah. like way more metal than that stuff. And Total Bastard, I, like Total Bastard Studio is what I called as soon as I had like an eight track. When I had, when I had, was just recording at the four track, it was just uh, sliding into hell on four tracks. But uh, when I got the eight track, it was like total bastard. It was kind of the the idea, the idea there. Let's see what else. So I think before I jump into that, these are these are just like a couple of compilations. But this is like. There used to be these like magazines. This is probably like from Greece or somewhere. So ancient ceremonies, and then there's this ancient ceremonies compilation as well, which was like a magazine. And I would, and they had a thing where here's another like super like death metal kind of like black metal black metal compilations that you could like join back then if you paid the money. So it was like a certain oh. amount of dollars for like, you know, a couple of minutes um, or like a minute or something like that. So I would like, I would, I would submit my tracks to these compilations um, just cause I wanted to get my, my music out there. I don't know, maybe you can kind of see it sort of. Not that great, but anyway, I had a song on there called uh, "The Meat People." <laughs> yeah, and uh, like, but I like, I feel like I was always maybe the really like weird band because it was all these like really kind of like polished death metal bands, and uh, I would just like, I was like, I want to be on this. Here's like, you know, 40 bucks or whatever, 50 bucks. And here's my like one minute song just so I can be on this compilation just so that my stuff get, gets out there. And I'm like, yeah, no, I end up being like the very last track, like track, you know, track 30 or something or track 20 on like the second disc. Uh, just, just so they can humor me. But that was a thing I would do back in the day just to kind of like get, get my shit out there and just, you know, see if people would get into it or not it was like you know that was i don't know man when i when i did this back then it was just about trying to get shit out there and see you know i don't even know i i don't even know what exactly the goal was it was just like i'm doing this and i'm just yeah. sending it's stuff kind of out what you and, did when you had like a project like that, right? You kind of just wanted to get it out there as much as possible. And I guess that, that was kind of the way to do it. Like you yeah, weren't going to go on tour. I you guess. were going to like do splits and like, I don't know. In my head, it was the same thing when I started. It was like, just do as like as many releases as you can and tr always try to do splits and just push it as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And I was playing like all the sides, right? Like, so I was doing like the noise stuff, um, and I was doing uh, death metal stuff, and you know, grindcore. So I was just like trying to play everywhere just to get my stuff out there. I don't even really know what the um, what the expectation was at the time because it was just me, and I wasn't playing shows or anything. It was just like I just want to get my shit out there. I was yeah. just like stoked about doing it. I spent like so much money on postage back in the day i can't imagine like i basically just worked so i could pay my rent eat a little bit and mail stuff like hundreds of dollars i'm sure like a month i spent just like mailing crap out uh yeah because even trading, so I, trading stuff like it must have been like super expensive yeah no it was crazy yeah i was like yeah it was ridiculous um I never did a Brave Words compilation. I feel like I feel like they were always too expensive or something. I think I looked into it and I was just like, I don't have the money for that. Um, another recording I did soon after that is this one, Escunta. Oh yeah. Which is another just like straight up noise release um, that I did for a buddy that ran a noise label in Chicago. So this is just a straight up noise release with some really like 
really the best song titles you could ever think yeah. of. Fuck the facts is sexy. Yeah. You know what? This I I might be messing the era that this is in. This might have actually come out after we were a band. Now that I look at it, is it two thousand closer? Just be- by any chance? Yeah, two thousand one. But January two thousand one. So early. Uh... Fuck the facts is like a band started jamming in two in January two thousand one, and this came out in January two thousand one. So this like song like killing Matt with alcohol like Matt was like Matt Connell like the our first drummer, the first human drummer in <laughs> Fuck the Facts. Uh, but we would hang out a lot. That's probably based on uh, we used to go to the bistro on Monday nights for like goth night. <laughs> oh yeah. And yeah, and Matt and I would like get like a picture, a, a, like a picture or two of beer, and like I was like a total lightweight, and he must. I think we were both lightweights, and I just remember us getting like way too drunk. It was just like it was just silly. There's just like a lot of silly there, silly stuff there, silly noise tracks. I think the the track Ottawa is just like, I just went around with my tape recorder walking around the city, and then I kind of like did a bunch of like feedback loops and stuff with it, just to make noise out of it. Escunta. So yeah, that was it, and that's a straight up noise album, and that's like another album that people kind of think is like a, a a full fuck the facts full length album. This picture, actually, the cover the cover is actually a picture that I took while I was on a trip in India. And, uh, like, that, the, I, took a, I took, like, a three-month trip to India with my dad and my brother. And uh, it was a really, like, life-changing experience. It was one of those things when I came back to that, from that trip, I, I think I came back from that trip, like, super motivated to do fuck the fact shit. Because, I don't know, it was just kind of, like, a lot of stuff kind of like changed for me after that trip and I was just like really motivated about doing my own kind of thing. Um, it was a really awesome experience. Uh, so after that, I'm getting now <clears throat> finally to what is like the last um, Fuck the Facts like solo release, which would be originally this I'm gonna take it out of the cover originally this which is a split with uh, Skoda 120 oh, yeah. 50 so there it's it's funny actually now because I look at this and this is kind of where the the timeline starts to get distorted right <laughs> uh, so there's another fuck the facts logo uh, where is it there that that Matt did on his computer. So now we have computers. So there's a logo with a computer. There's another, I think, I guess Matt did that logo too. You've seen this one, that just FTF logo. Oh yeah, Matt did that one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was not very good at computers. I've never been, I've never been awesome at computers. So Matt did, Matt did all that shit. Fuckthefacts.com exists. And I live on Preston Street. I live on Preston Street at this time. That actually, that's not even a house anymore. That's like a business now. That place doesn't exist anymore either. I, I see a pattern. Preston. Yeah. Just a, a little destruction. Um, after <laughs> every place you live and, and created music in just disappears into oblivion. But it's, it's funny because um, like there's like the four band photos, but I'm the only person on this recording. Like this was just... This was just me, but I guess this was this came out after uh, after we had started jamming as a band. So I think I think I'm doing okay actually for the there's the Skoda side for the timeline. I think this is still kind of making sense. Yeah. There's a weird picture on the back. Um. So yeah, there's that Skoda one. That was a tape. There's also a CD version of it. Whoa. Colors. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, this is now we're getting to the area where you can get oh this is gonna this is gonna blow your mind. That. Oh the CD shit. version C D version was in color. 
we didn't make this cover. It was actually whoever put this out. It was actually is a label called uh, Beer Is Not Drink from the Czech Republic. <laughs> yeah, a label called Beer Is Not Drink from the Czech Republic that put Sounds this out. Right. Color. Yes. Yeah, I don't think we we didn't we didn't make the artwork. I think he just took the logo and he did he did this himself. Which is pretty cool. It's back when you couldn't even really like do like yeah, you know, flip the side. Oh, yeah. You have to like do two separate exactly. copies. Um let's see if anything else is from that. So basically, so that split with Skoda ends up being what is discoing the dead. And discoing the dead is like the last, I guess, like full recording that I did by myself. Just discoing the dead. And one one fun thing. Actually, this is even I'm 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 even a bit confused about this. So maybe maybe discoing the dead came out before I we released the split. Because I just guessing by the address here it was my dad's place in Gatineau. So this split, this might have came out before the split. There's some kind of artwork that I took from a book. Um, a fun, a fun thing about this too is I actually I was like maybe it's weird that it's just me. So I I made band members. There's like five people in this band. And they all have like names and like the instrument that they play and stuff. And I just use pictures from that book to kind of give them like faces. So that was discoing the dead. And this is kind of when the whole like, like disco core thing kind of happened. Like my idea was just like, I'm going to be like this, like grindcore disco band. There's a picture of the vill village people on the CD. I think this is like a later thing I did. I think originally I just wrote like fuck the facts just going the dead with like a stencil that I had and a marker. Oh yeah. So this is this is kind of like yeah, this is kind of like the beginning the beginning of that some more stuff from the the inside you can kind of see. So yeah. So there was that just going the dead. And that's like the original. What year was this? Yeah, so this is the original one. 2000, 2000? 2000, late 2000. 2000. Oh. It's got to be late 2000 because I did it before I started jamming with Matt. So it's got to be late 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, then the years like this, <clears throat> this is discoing the dead this is the re-released version that my buddy fernando from black hole productions re-released which was really cool he got someone to he got someone to basically like draw the artwork which was pretty yeah, amazing cool, yeah yeah he did this whole like really cool like discoing thing disco scene <laughs> on the inside yeah there's a lot of stuff. So, and this is kind of like, I, I, I think I had this idea that, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this disco themed grindcore band and that's going to be my thing. And it's going to be like, you know, and so you might remember that we did, we used this design actually on a, a lot of like merch. Yeah, we printed yeah. that on like hoodies and stuff. I think maybe even t-shirts and this too. I don't know if you can, see it well but that design we used a lot we have a lot there's a lot of fuck the fact shirts with these two dead people hugging oh yeah yeah and that that basically sums up the whole um um like solo era of fuck the facts before we started jamming as a band in january 2001 uh, like Matt, Matt and I played in a death metal band called Recondite. Oh yeah. And, um, 
And I don't know. I was just like, hey, you want to start jamming? And, and Matt had like literally just like started learning to play drums. Like it's not like he was a drummer in a band. He was a vocalist in the band and I was the bass player. So he had just started um, learning to play drums. And I was just kind of like learning to play guitar. Like the guitar that I used on like all of these recordings was actually a, like a $40 guitar that I had bought off Sean, like Sean from the Ink Spot. Uh, he, he sold it to me like one of the tuning pegs was broken I think it was just like it just had five strings and he sold it to me for like 40 bucks and I did I did the like all the recordings with that guitar yeah because you mainly played uh, bass right even in, in Kuru you played bass yeah in Kuru yeah, I played bass so like Jay was the guitar player yeah. and uh, yeah Jay was the guitar player and Brent was the vocalist and I was the bass player so I yeah I always played bass like I always played bass until fuck the facts. I never played guitar. Obviously, I could play a little bit of guitar, and I wrote a few things on guitar, but I was never a guitarist in a band uh, until I was in fuck the facts. Let's get some of this crap out of the way. I feel like I'm drinking too slow. Yeah, because I got a pee. Man. Oh. No. That's all I'm doing. I'm just drinking. Oh, wait, actually. <laughs> I'm trying to stay remotely. So like, my face is here. I got to say something sometime. Uh, yeah, recondite. Yeah, the, a lot of really good stuff came yeah. of recondite. Actually, uh, I still like, you know, uh, I work with like uh, Will, who's in like Dead Soul Alliance, and he we were in recondite together. And I'm sure at some point, I think actually he might have re-released the Rakanda recordings. Anyway, we talked about maybe re-releasing it at some point. Forgot a couple of things. Here's a here's a compilation I was on. Released a song called Crumbs. I don't even remember what it sounds like. Uh, but uh, it's probably cool. Uh, and there was a CD version of the split we do with SMES. This dude, this fecal matter, discorporated productions guy, took uh, the recordings and and released them as like a CD with like huge pot leaves. Uh, this is really cool too. Yeah, this is really cool because I really I really like this stuff with the S with SMES. And then there was this compilation that I was on. Uh, put out a song called uh, Needle Through Thread. Yeah, Needle Through Thread. And it's it's actually really cool. It's actually a really cool song. Um, maybe we can even check that out. I think, I, I think we uploaded it, right? I sent it to you, right? Playing right now. Is it? Yeah. Fucking Disco Volante. For fans of Plan Rossar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you say you say uh you say disco volante. But uh yeah, like disco volante was like really um an influence, like a big influence. I was really into Mr. Bungle, especially that album. Um so yeah, that that probably was totally me trying to be like Mr. Bungle. So then after that, so this is what ended up being uh, the very last recording that I did uh, as like solo fuck the facts for this compilation, Worldwide Violence. And it was a, it was, 
it's the only seven inch uh that got released with like my solo shit there's the song there's a song called disease and friction and i i feel like this song was really cool actually i remember recording this one and i did it on my eight track and i had gotten to the point where you know i was i actually had to speed up the the reels because i kind of like maxed out the tempo on the drum machine so now i was like slowing down the reels while i was recording the drum machine and then kind of like speeding it up while i was tracking the guitars because the drums were getting like too slow <laughs> um yeah so like i was i was kind of like in the zone where that shit happened and uh it's it's funny because there's you know there's like the different eras of the band and it's like okay i've I've gotten really good with my drum machine and and like doing this this stuff on my own and now we went to being a band and now i'm the guitar player in the band and just kind of like had to relearn basically a completely different structure of how fuck the facts was going to be from like that point right Um, It's now like at this point, like there's a full band. Hmm. Like FTF is like a full band at at this point. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so then we would jump into um, the uh, the 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 first band thing. Do you want to? Is there anything else we we want to check out from that era? I don't know. Should we listen to any of that that music? been playing oh, for like an wanna, hour yeah people who checked it <laughs> yeah okay Let's see if there's any you're playing that okay cool okay oh yeah we can keep going step into the next era <laughs> mm-hmm uh, um okay so the next era here so this is when i started jamming with matt uh and we 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 first started just kind of like learning like fuck the facts songs from like uh just going the dead we did like burning side uh whisper dependency i remember uh and like yeah songs like roach yeah um release stuff like that so yeah we were starting we didn't really i think start writing stuff right away we were just learning fuck the facts songs uh, and then he got his buddy Tim, Tim Audette, to play guitar. So we didn't have a bass player uh, forever. We had two guitar players and a drummer. Uh, and the first thing that we ended up doing with that lineup was was this. Oops, sorry. This release on my Ghetto Blaster recordings thing. It's a split with Am Sanglant and. Um, <laughs> I think I had I had a different website. A different Angel Fire was it Angelfire dot com slash boy band slash yo mama <laughs> <laughs> was the, was the Ghetto Blaster website. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we did this split, and it was basically what we did for this. It was just the three of us. So it was me, me on guitar, Tim on guitar, and Matt on drums. Uh, and we just had like a jam. We just like jammed. It's like a kind of like noisy improv jam. I recorded the whole thing on my eight track. I I think we went back and Matt did a couple of like vocals over it but uh yeah that was that was the whole thing it's really just kind of like an experimental jam so it's playing right now you know yeah yeah so those are guitars and we both had like digitex oh yeah So anyone's like fil- familiar with like uh, Digitex, like they had like a lot of effects. We kind of like go through them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's good, but it was the idea, and it was fun. I think that's the most important part. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was yeah. 
it's different and it goes yeah. on for how long how long is this song this is like 15 minutes yeah 15 minutes of this but there's and we didn't even do dr- we didn't even do drugs <laughs> this shit just came out naturally is it kind of a live off the floor thing it's completely live off the yeah. floor Yeah. <laughs> A lot of just jamming. So many effects on those Digitex. You gotta have, you know, you gotta have, gotta use them. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. All right, someone's asking, is it for like a FTF box set? <laughs> no. 97 to 2021, no. Though, I feel like, you know, I, I think one of the reasons I think we thought of doing this is is because, you know, a lot of people think about the band starting and, you, and could... you know, maybe like Mullet Fever at the very earliest or like, you know, I, probably a lot of people think of like Stigmata High Five, which came out in 2006, which means like I was already doing Fuck the Facts for like nine years when that, when that first uh, like Relapse album came out. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I probably don't need to listen to the whole 15 minutes, but... <laughs> oh, come on. Just tell me, <laughs> tell me when's the good part. What's the best part? The catchy part. Well, that's like... Uh, that's a cool effect. <laughs> ah, okay. Anyway, we'll keep going before I get too sidetracked. Um, let's see what's even going on. So then... Let's see if this is what I should do. What the fuck is even on this? So basically, after we did um, this recording, I asked my buddy Brent, who was in Kuru with me, if he would be the vocalist. Um, and he said yes. Even though like, I knew Brent was kind of getting out of the, the music scene, it wasn't like, you know, like extreme music and all that shit, like wasn't really his thing as much anymore. He still agreed to do it, which was like really cool. Um, and we did. I'm trying to think. Was the f- I think the first thing that we did? The first thing that we did with Brent. So now we're a four piece. So it's me, Matt, Tim, and Brent. As we did the 409 EP. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got something from that? Yeah, that's what I'm putting on. Oh, the samples from the samples from this actually it's fun like that's that's from the movie DC cab I actually had that on VHS so that was easy to record I don't know if anyone out, out there has ever seen the movie DC cab uh, so yeah 409 EP basically called that because we did a, a Beach Boys cover of their song 409 and and funny enough like my brother my brother is listed as the bass player on this though i feel like he didn't actually play bass on this i think he might have showed up and then i retract his bass like very vague like memories of of my brother actually jamming with us yeah and this is yeah this is the song roach we played this song. We played this song live a bunch. Yeah. You got the song. Put on the song 409. first <laughs> samples before anything <laughs> I 
This was a pretty cool thing back then <laughs> when you could get these like three inch CDRs. Jeez. I was pretty stoked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we did that. Um, and then the thing we did after that uh, is what ends up being or this split. Dez will know this for sure. He's oh, still yeah. out there. Oh, I remember that too. I guess, yeah, that's kind of like yeah. when me and, me and Dez were yeah so uh yeah so this is an idea i had for like a 99 song three-way split release where each band would do 33 songs um let me step back i only got copy number 83 wow um so yeah so yeah, that was the idea. Each band would do 33 songs. So so what we did is literally like one afternoon before I had to go to work, I just brought my 8-track down to uh, where we jammed, which is like Matt's parents' place in the basement. And we just like would, we would just like write like on the spot an idea. It's like, okay, here's a riff. Here's a quick little idea. Or here's a couple of riffs. Just hit record and record it. We did like 33 songs for this thing in probably like a, a couple of hours. Oh yeah, that's Brent. So that's all, that's the track listing there on the back from all the bands. No, no refund being like Joe's band. Joe from like, I don't know, about like 40 or 50 bands. Another, a fun thing actually, I have a fun, a fun sample of, uh, of Joe, he would like call my uh, yeah. on like discoing the dead. You have discoing the dead there. Yeah. It's uh... which song is it again? Go to uh, whisper. Go to whisper. No. Nah. Go to disco rage. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is Joe. And uh yeah, I'd like to talk to you about that uh shit core band, no refund. Yeah. Here you might wanna hear so play it from on you here. So yeah, so Joe, Joe would, and I had this, I had this Samba CD that I added there. So Joe would call me, and he would play his like noise core bands to my answering machine, and that's what I, that's what I sampled. So yeah. So yeah, here's some. So this is kind of what we did for the uh, the the no refund uh, mermaid in a manhole uh, three way split. <laughs> <laughs> Which eventually, on its own, uh, oh, there's the Digitech again for the the clean guitars. Mm -hmm. So this ends up being Mullet Fever, which is something that Brent came. So this eventually, this is like after like 
later on in the year, probably like December 2001, Mullet Fever. I remember we played a show, and there's like another. I, the, I actually I think the locals are getting worse. <laughs> they got they were really good in the very beginning, and then we got computers, and they all got worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were in Montreal playing a show, and uh, that was a good song too. Uh, we were playing a show in Montreal, and and we were just going somewhere and Brent was like oh the guy's got mullet fever and that just kind of like stuck and that ended up being this and this is literally me going on a computer <clears throat> and googling mullets and grabbing every single picture that I could to make this mullet fever cover you mean Alta Vista mullets and that's it that's a threshold <laughs> a threshold man computers there's a lot of songs. And so this is kind of like a confusing thing about mullet fever. Like if you if you get mullet fever, it goes after after track 33, there's a star and it says bonus tracks. But you're like, what bonus tracks from what? And it's bonus tracks because this was originally released as a uh, um, split. three way split where we just had 33 songs, right? There's all this stuff. Just mastering Threshold there. Threshold is definitely the very best, the very best filter you could use. It's the H and two of filters. Oh look at that! Yeah, that's as good as it was gonna get. Did I put my phone number there? Wow! I call that number. Different times. <laughs> I put my I put my phone number. That's so crazy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's some fun. There's some fun stuff. You got the Metallica, the Metallica cover. Yeah, Master of Puppets. This, Everyone loves this Master video of Puppets. Might get flagged. The fun thing about this is that where we jammed in Matt's basement, he had a piano, an actual piano set up behind him. So there, in the breaks where you hear the piano, that's Matt literally just turning around and playing piano. That's Matt playing piano, yeah. Computers, man. Yeah. And again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fun. I should, I should, I should say like. Is the back you can kind of see it was a lot of fun i should say uh discoing the dead is the first recording that i did on an actual computer so everything leading up to discoing the dead was done just like my so earlier four track then the eight track. an eight eight track and i would just like bounce it down to um like literally like out onto like a cassette it was like master cassettes that's all they were i didn't have a cdr i didn't have a cd burner or anything like that so it was just like master cassettes uh and then but for discoing the dead i still recorded all the instrumentation uh and the vocals and everything on my eight track but then i bounced it onto the computer and um i did i guess like the mixing and stuff on there and a funny thing about discoing the dead too the discoing the dead as well is that uh after i had finished discoing the dead i had purposefully deleted all the files <laughs> like i del i deleted everything just 
And in my mind, I was like, this is so that I don't fuck it up later on in my life. It's kind of it's kind of funny to think about it now because now, especially like doing what I do, I would like love to open up those files and just like remix Just Going the Dead or do something, but I can't yeah. because I purposefully deleted them all after after I had done uh, done the master. Just funny. Uh, so yeah, that would be Mullet Fever. This then there was a re-release of Mullet Fever. This is probably like most people that have. Mullet Fever. Yeah, Cool Edit Pro. Yeah, we were just talking about Cool Edit Pro. <laughs> yes, this is all totally Cool Edit Pro. Mel actually did this cover. We did a re-release of Mullet Fever. Oh, yeah. So I think a, a lot of people... She did an awesome job, actually. You know, for back in the day, for sure. Um, it's really cool. That's awesome. Um, I think a lot of people that have Mullet Fever probably have this version of it which has i think 409 on it as well and this has this has some of like the rap shit actually yeah. you want to jump to jump to one of those like uh what is it what is fucking brent's thing battle him battle him yeah like this was this was kind of the thing, like, and this was, I guess, like, always sort of the idea about, like, fuck the facts. <laughs> it's like, I, personally, I was never really crazy into, like, rap and hip-hop. Like, I liked Public Enemy back in the day. Uh, but Brent, this was, like, really his thing. And when he was in the band, I was like, fuck it, dude, do you want to do rap? Let's do a rap song. And we actually did some of these live. I don't think we did Battle Him live, but there was another rap song that he that we had that uh, that we did live. And I was like, this is, I don't know, it's cool, man. It's like, whatever you want to do, let's just do it. It's time to bring that shit back. Yeah. Brent and I were actually, like, uh, I guess before everything just kind of, like, ended, we were actually working on a, a, a rap album for just him. And it was going to be called Blasphemy Made Fresh. <laughs> that would still be cool today. Yeah, it's still cool. <laughs> Disco Discoing the Dead is actually like I kind of there was a band I don't remember the band's name now but I can picture the cover but they had an album called Disgorging the Dead and I just kind of like scooped it. I was like fuck it Discoing the Dead that was that's just that's just funny to me This was also Mullet Fever. There's like a, cas a cassette version of it. It was released uh, by a label in Malaysia. Looks very different. What? I guess those are Malaysian mullets. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The guy went and got Malaysian mullets. <laughs> I never saw that. <laughs> yeah. Malaysian mullets. Malaysian mullet fever. Crazy. <laughs> oh, you remember this is this is a very common effect. This effect of like invert. Oh yeah. We can almost even call it the Mesrine effect. <laughs> they did a lot of that. That was a that was a popular thing to do. But that was really cool. They was released that on cassette and different artwork and shit. Um, then there's this split. I don't even know much about this split. A split with fuck, fuck the facts. Bonsai 606. Yeah, there's not, there's not a crazy lot. What? Uh, I don't even see a track listing on this thing. But it's the era with with Brent and Matt and Tim. I don't even actually know what's on this. Yeah, 
Yeah, the the hip hop the hip hop and rap stuff is is funny. There's like I'm I'm sure it really confused people and like some people just be like, why the fuck would you do that? But for me, it makes complete sense why you would do that. <laughs> like that's what you want to do. That's what we do, and that's kind of been that was that was the motto, and that was what it was. And I'm glad I'm glad we did it. It's fun. It's fun to look back on. So a bunch of tracks, a bunch of tracks from Mullet Fever ended up being on this seven inch. Matt did this artwork. I don't remember. I don't remember those pictures from, but I, I actually like this artwork. I think it's pretty cool. That's a really cool vinyl too. I remember that one. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really nice looking vinyl. <laughs> so yeah, a bunch of tracks from Mullet Fever end up being on this thing. Yeah. Bonsai 666, songs from 409. Yeah, okay. That sounds right. From Simon, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff, man. There was just like... Back then, I was just like always fucking making music. Always doing shit. And just like a lot of weird shit came from it. Yeah. Which is awesome. Especially when you do a lot of stuff, you know, alone. And it's like you're in control of everything. Like even the rhythm in which you're like producing music. So I think I think you end up having like so much more material when you do stuff like that. Yeah. Especially no, for when sure. you do like funky, weird shit. Like you're going to end up having so much stuff. Which is kind of pretty cool. I think the only other thing I have from this era is this compilation. Oh, yeah. Wait, this, so this in August 2001, Fuck the Facts plays their very first show, and it's a festival in Melbourne, Quebec. And there ends up being a CD compilation that comes from it, which is really cool because there's a track. Uh, it, this is actually another hilarious thing. We're not even listed properly on this this compilation so i guess they didn't remember that we were called fuck the facts at all because we're listed as ftw i guess kind of like fuck the world um do you have that song yeah the live version of uh whisper, whisper dependency so this is the from the very first show that we ever played Yeah. <laughs> and this was like, so this is Brent on vocals, Matt drumming, and me and Tim on guitar. Believe it or not, I made up this part every single time. <laughs> I know it sounds like it's something that <laughs> I've practiced a lot, but no, I made that up every single time. And Steve Vai um, but yeah, I remember we showed up at this festival and it was totally a punk festival. It was like, all right, you're going to be on at midnight. And I think we ended up going on at like four in the morning or something, it's you know, to like basically like a bunch of like drunk punks, like passed out on the stage. It was a pretty crazy uh, festival. It was a cool festival, yeah. yeah. It's funny too because Mel was at that festival and she watched her set. I I played there with Rotten, uh, was it Rotten Pieces or Veteran. I don't remember. But it was, really? It, it must have been. It must have yeah. been after that, then, right? Yeah, I can't. I don't remember what year. Probably two thousand four or something. Or... Yeah. Okay. It was pretty brutal. I just the main thing I remember is when we showed up, they were like, "Don't drink the water." It's like, okay. And it, and it rained. It rained like the whole night. 
It was kind of crazy. It was weird. It was like, I know for a while it was like a crazy festival. Like it was super cool and there were a lot of people there. But I remember when we played, it was kind of dying and, and yeah, it was more yeah. like a zombie fest than, yeah. than anything yeah, else. Yeah, it was it was it was decent when we played but you know we never played a show so like and back then it's like anything was just awesome yeah just stoked to do anything um but yeah and that's that's basically what sort of ended that era and uh oh yeah We we played a bunch of songs from Mother Fever, like even as we went on, we played like Don't Don't Call My Slamming Outfit Cool White Bread. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but this is Roach, yeah, from four oh nine. So yeah, that ended up being, I guess, like the end of Brent was like, Brent wanted to leave the band. Uh, Mel started filling in on some shows. And uh, that's when, you know, eventually Mel just joined the band and Brent kind of went on and did his own thing. Uh, but, you know, Brent was still around when we did, when we did all the writing for uh, what would end up being like backstabber etiquette? Oh yeah, yeah. So a lot of these songs, and actually, again, that's my the uh, not not this guy, but the the main painting here is a painting of my mom. My mom did that painting. Yeah. So we did. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is, I guess, kind of when we started shifting, maybe. It wasn't, like, as grindcore anymore. I think we were becoming a bit more metal. It looks like it, right? Yeah. Aesthetically, at least. Like, it's... Yeah, aesthetically, honestly, yeah. Like, look at this. Like, oh, finding beauty and betrayal. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> at the time, that sounded really cool. It actually hurts to read that now. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think aesthetically we were kind of going in. Like, if you listen to it, it's a lot more metal. I think, like, we were playing, like, faster, like, kind of Cryptopsy. And we had, like, or, like, yeah, bands like Cryptopsy and stuff like that were more of an influence. Yeah. Yeah, Ballet Addict. We also played that a bunch. The thing with the thing the thing with this album is I think I think there's some good songs on it, but like I we weren't just we we just weren't there yet, like musicianship wise to kind of pull off exactly what we wanted to pull off. But uh, I think there's I think there's some cool material on this. Yeah, I like this album. Yeah, I think just like production wise, it probably could have been a bit better. But a bunch of these songs were, a bunch of these songs were already written um, when Brent was in the band. This part. Oh yeah, you played this live? Yeah, but on guitar. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. This was like the go crazy. Yeah. Like we were really into like uh, Dillinger Escape Plan around this time too. Well, especially for the moves, we can't play that shit to save our lives. Just the there moves. were a lot of moves. <laughs> there were a lot of moves back then. Ballet addict. I think even like the kind of like song titles were kind of like that tongue in cheek sort of like. Yeah, kind of humorous in a way, sort of material. Mm. Um, 
so we did that. Oh yeah, there was two versions. Because we signed to like, you know, Remy who had like, he had PCR recently. He used to have a label called Grind It. Oh, well, he yeah. used to have a label called Great White North. But he had like a grindcore kind of thing called Grind It that we signed to. And then he changed to Profusion? Profusion. Oh yeah, but that's when he had his, his store, right? Yeah, exactly. So he had a record store and he kind of kind of did that. So the, the second pressing was on that. But he was really cool, man. He did a yeah. lot of really awesome stuff for us. Like actually the very first tour that you did with us was like a, a Great White North tour, right? Yeah. That Remy had put together. Brief for spite. Yeah, brief for spite in the mass. Yeah. Yeah, that was the very first tour. And so, do you remember what? Uh, where the the sample in Burning Sign is from? Is this? Well, this uh, is not Burning Sign. This is a few words for the end. But wait. Uh, yeah, go to Burning Side. It's a, in the, yeah, this. I don't remember. It it's is. the screaming, right? Well, this suffering. Oh, oh, this is, uh, the screaming. I don't remember, uh, but the suffering is from a, a movie called uh, I think it's called Swimming with Sharks and it's um, uh, what's that guy's name that actor he's a very famous actor who doesn't do stuff anymore you know uh, American Beauty uh, yes you're talking about well Kevin Spacey yeah Kevin Spacey yeah yeah so this is, yeah, the samples, uh, yeah, Kevin Spacey from, in the movie Swimming with Sharks. Nitro, um, Nitro del Toro. Huh. Oh, it's Chase. Awesome. Yeah, we played this song a lot. <laughs> this was kind of yeah. like, I guess back in the day, like Burning Side was kind of like our hit. <laughs> That's the song we would play. Um, but anyway, after that, we did we did a, a death cover, which was pretty cool. <clears throat> I guess a, they asked us to do... We asked us to be a part of this death. And Tim, who was the guitar player at the time, was really into... Uh, Death. I, I I always like death as well. Uh, we did empty words, but Tim Tim is really the guy that kind of spearheaded this cover. Mel had never heard death before in her life, but uh, it was cool. And we did that. And we also did uh, at the same time as the same time as we did a cover of death. We did an. Are we gonna? Oh, Unho uh, it's an unholy grave. Yeah. You can kind of see it, right? You, you can see the, the picture, mostly. And you can see the picture, yeah. yeah. But anyway, we did a, a cover for an unholy grave compilation. We did the song Confession. Um, yeah, we did those. We did those two songs, and then we ended up releasing them as well on a split 7-inch that we did with Sylvester Saline. And there's another kind of logo. This is a weird cover, man. Like, this is computers for you, eh? I don't know. It is what it is. Oh, Sylvester Stallone side. We fuck the facts. They probably got the better cover than us. I don't know. This was kind of us just like figuring shit out. There's another logo. Oh yeah. The fa <laughs> yeah, the fact fuckers. <laughs> yeah. 
And there's another house. I moved again. Jeez. This place might this place might still exist. I don't know. Someone go check it out. Um But yeah, so we did that. And then this, yeah, what you're playing now. Has a split with uh, evil minded? Yeah. This is really cool. I, I love this cover. One of my favorites still. I love it. That was awesome. <laughs> it's still one of my favorite covers. Is the feeble minded side. I feel I think we actually played with these guys one time in the Czech Republic. I don't know if you remember, I have a vague remem vague memory of us actually playing with feeble minded in the Czech Republic. Is it inside? That's so cool. That's so cool. One of my favorite, favorite artworks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff there. And I, I, I'm really happy with how, with how uh, this recording turned out. It's kind of it's it's funny actually listen back listening back to it now because it feels it feels like a little bit kind of dated. That's sort of like early two thousands era, MySpace era. And that's that's all in a collection of Squid, huh? Yeah. 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 I think actually even before that, actually here's like, yeah, before that, we did a split with Monolith. And if you look at the you look here, like Mel's the vocalist there, but the song title, uh, like song two, uh, Cloud Forms, I think the, the actual song title is, I think it's actually Secondhand Skin. Oh. But, but Cloud Forms, I think, is the, the title that Brent gave it. And this is this is a live recording that we did at this venue that used to exist in Toronto called the Cathedral. I don't know if you remember that venue, and they'd like record. Oh, yeah. That's where we played with uh, "Time Kills Everything," right? Uh, I don't know. Did we play there? Yeah, we've. I like. I've. Well, I've played there numerous times. Yeah, I don't remember. It was like that three, three venues in one. Yeah, uh, on and Green? the Cathedral is like the basement one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We played there. You played a few times with like the facts. You know, I know it's like a, it's like a store now, like furniture store. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a split. Another split we did with Iron Bitch Face. <laughs> was a band from Kitchener that we did a bunch of stuff with back in the day. And there's another logo. Man, I could almost like count the logos. There's got to be at least like ten different Fuck the Facts logos recorded live at the underground so the underground was a venue Wait, that we used a lot back in the day you played there a lot oh yeah uh, and now it's house of targ yeah but it used to be a, it used to be a venue called the underground and we had a lot of shows there man i would put shows on there like uh like Wait, it was, once it was a month free, right? once a month for sure it was free to rent the place yeah it was free to rent the place But yeah, Iron Bitch Face Split. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, smoking a smoking a fatty. <laughs> oh my god. 
Now we did a split with uh, Surgeon Slaughter. Yeah. So this stuff, this stuff is kind of it's kind of fun. Like so, this and the feeble-minded thing. The way this stuff was actually written was basically Matt would just record a bunch of drum tracks and give them to me. And I would write music over the drum tracks that he recorded. So songs like, like on this is like uh, La Tête Hors de L'eau, oh, yeah. right? Which is like a song that we've played like a million times. But uh, yeah, Matt and I just like, we never, we didn't like jam that song to write it. He literally just wrote the drums for it and I wrote all the riffs over it. And that's how that song came to be. But this is another this is another split that I I was really happy with overseas connection. Yeah, overseas connection. And then all that stuff ends up being on collection of splits. Right? I have two copies because at first uh, Remy released it on Great White North and then Galley Records released it again. So there's like a second pressing. Oh, another another recording that's on that, which is the last one was the... Oh, yeah, the subcut? Yeah, the split we did with Subcut. Which is like a Brazilian grindcore band. Oh yeah, medicated like a motherfucker. So this is, yeah. So medicated like a motherfucker. That's from this. This stuff turned out really cool. You, you can hear like... How the production is so much better. And then, yeah, it's still. I think it's for what it is. I think it sounds pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Like from from backstabber. Like yeah, this got. I think I got a lot better. Mm -hmm. I was doing this. I was doing this shit a lot. Bye. You want to say hi? No. <laughs> As my daughter going okay. to bed. Um, yeah, no, this stuff I was I was really happy with. Is that this means nothing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we played a bunch of these songs. You must have played a bunch of these songs, right? Uh. Take all the little unburden. I think uh Leper Accountant. Yeah, Leper Accountant. I don't know if I played I think maybe no one I, remembered who started. I feel like like this stuff, like this whole um like what you're playing now from like collection, which is like the Sergeant of Slaughter split, this mm -hmm. is when shit started getting like a bit more like technical, I think it's just because we were like playing all the time. Yeah. That you know, it was actually getting pretty decent at guitar. Because yeah, stuff got pretty crazy. But like yeah, uh, yeah. So like another, so go to, like a another living night because that's like from this split, like the uh, subcut yeah. split. Oh yeah. This is like super metal. And this is like, uh, Matt did this. Like, Matt Connell actually recorded this and mixed it and everything. This is like, he had gone to school for, you went to like Raven Street, did the program. Oh, yeah. He did a really good job. And we, on this recording, actually, we got Mike Alexander from uh, Head It's Concrete, yeah. like swallowing shit. He was he was down in Ottawa for a while, and we got him to do some backing vocals on this song. Oh, 
McConnell was also getting more comfortable in the kit. Oh yeah, my, Matt got really good at Matt got became a really good drummer. Yeah. Like he went on to like you know after after with us he went on to play with with Exhumed for a while, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Mac got really good. And like, you know, his his like crazy like hyper blasting or whatever blasting was yeah. was definitely like a part of our sound and I think like how fast he was. Yeah. Yeah, that was Oh. This this has got to be Dave Menard. Oh, like one of the first things he did with you guys? Yeah, so after... Let me check. Yeah, so... So yeah, so there's our... Split. Actually, I don't know. There's the subcut side. There's the inside of the booklet. Um, so after Tim had left the band, uh, we got this guy Dave Menard to play who is a really awesome guitar player. So at this point, we still don't even have a bass player. We didn't have a bass player for like the first like <laughs> couple of years. Just two guitars. We d I did bass on the recording, but there was no actual bass player. Uh, but yeah, because Dave, Dave was a really good guitar player. I could tell just from that solo that that was Dave. That sounds like that uh, demon song. Which song? Uh, that curse song. Just made me think of that. Oh. Yeah. Things are getting things are getting wacky and kind of like <laughs> dissonant. This is another. So this is when we all kind of like started. The band started. Oh, actually, so no, sorry. So, so this is before the subcut split, because Tim's there, but we, we were touring a decent amount for a small band. And we had like little recordings and we released this live damage thing. I guess my buddy Lee in, from Australia, Smell the Stench, released it. There's a few recordings, Ottawa and Halifax. And there's a song, Marsha, which is actually a few words for the end. Oh, yeah. But Marsha was like the original title for a uh, few words for the end from when, when Brent was working on the song. Oh, maybe it says... Oh, yeah, Brent, I guess, is on one of the... on that recording. So I guess we played that song with Brent live. Yeah, it's so funny to hear this stuff now. So many notes. Noodly. Oh, this is a fun song, Ventriloquist Complex. This is from the uh, uh, Split with Surgeon Slaughter. hands 
Yeah, it's cool. It's funny, man. Sometimes I listen back to stuff. And I'm like, how the fuck did I even play that? Studio magic. Yeah, maybe a bit. I feel like there's was, there wasn't like a ton of studio magic back at this point. Oh no. But yeah, possibly a bit. Possibly a bit. This is a a little tour recording when we would go on tour. So like 2001, 2002 is just like when shit just starts like going nuts. And we're like we're just gonna tour forever. On tour, on tour forever. <laughs> so we put this little EP. We probably made our our way all the way to Winnipeg at this point. Yeah, I like this song. I really like how this this whole thing turned out. So another thing that was kind of going on while this whole like band was happening. Well, actually, here's another thing. Actually, before I get to that, another split with the NAG. <laughs> A lot of the same songs that we had released elsewhere. Not much to see there. A lot of the stuff that we had already kind of released. Um, but I, we, I was also doing still some like kind of like noise splits while the band was kind of the band was doing stuff, but I was also doing noise splits under like fuck the facts so i did this split with conure i like what you're playing too now this is like the uh this is like a god flesh cover that we did Was that like I like how this, I like how this Godflesh cover turned out. Is that like the last uh, kind of solo noise recording you did? Uh, no, um, I did. I did a couple. So there was this. Uh, fuck. Do you have do you have the do you have this split there? Oh yeah, how much for that doggy in the window? <laughs> I made my playlist with uh, song titles. Yeah. It's this conure split. I don't I don't know what I was using to do this shit. I had I'm sure I had some sort of I don't know if I remember man, I can't remember at all. I was was it on a computer though? Well yeah, this no, point, this is yeah. totally on a computer. This is like I started making noise on a computer. Even like Escunta was like really computer based, yeah. whereas like Vagina Dancer was a lot more just like my four track through pedals. But yeah, just a lot of like noise. Uh, I did that. I did this split uh, with man herring bone. I don't know if we even see this address yet. I lived in Nepean for a while. <laughs> That's another noise split, right? Yeah, this is like another kind of like noise release. Larium Nights is is uh <laughs> Yeah, you will crash, you will die, but the song Larium Nights is is based oh, yeah. on 
my trip to India with my brother and uh, larium is like a medication you take against uh, getting like malaria yeah, yeah, yeah. but it like fucks with your head and it can kind of like make you like paranoid and shit yeah so my brother were like on like larium and we were just like had these like super paranoid thoughts and then my brother like got off the larium but I stayed on it it was just I don't know it's kind of a little bit of an inside thing Larium Knights. <laughs> and then there's this, which is like a collaboration with uh, Fever Spore, which I think is a dude. Uh, Marcel Herms from Holland, who's like an extremely talented artist. Like, this is his artwork. It's amazing. Amazing artwork. And it's like a collaboration where we both kind of like did did something for it. Do you have that there? Uh, yeah, a fever score. It's more just kind of like noisy sort of stuff. There's a CD. Yeah. Yeah, man, I did just like a lot of like kind of like experimental shit. Like, I don't know. I always loved like just making noise and kind of like the just just the uh, I don't know, just kind of like how naturally it sort of like manifested. It's very different than like writing like a metal song or even a grindcore song. Yeah. It just kind of like it's a different different process. It's a different part of the brain. <laughs> So I think like having like doing both was kind of like a really fun sort of like balance. Uh, the last one that I'll bring up, I think will be this split that I did with P.O.T. Pioneers of Technology, I think is what that stands for. But this is this is a fun one. So this is more just kind of like noise that I did by myself. And actually, no, I did a bunch of noise by myself. But actually, now that I'm looking at the song titles, I remember Tim, who was the guitar player, um, uh, for like Mullet Fever era. He had like some sort of like video game program that he was like making music on. And he did a bunch. He did a bunch of this stuff. Like, there's a whisper dependency video game version that he did. Oh yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. Go, yeah. That. He like. Maybe it's like Guitar Pro, basically, but. Yeah. <laughs> basically, took the song "Whisper Dependency" and kind of like tabbed it out in his computer program. Um, but, yeah, CD, classic CDRs, now we had CDRs, and that was, that was like the shit. Oh, P.O.T., I thought you meant P.O.D. No, P.O., no, next, Few, that's coming up. <laughs> We're gonna get a split with P.O.D. at some point. Um, yeah, so Tim did a bunch of this, but there's one, there's one song on this. And I was telling you about this earlier, that Guinness Madness song. Oh, yeah. So so Guinness Madness is like Mel and I were at we were out at the bistro because at that point, like for me, the bistro was kind of like, I guess, the bar to hang out at. And Mel was in Ottawa and we went out to the bistro and we were hanging out and just like drinking beer and just kind of like talking about music. And we were like, fuck this. Let's just go back. Let's go back to my place and just like write music and we went back and we we wrote this song Gu guinness madness uh yeah <laughs> which by no means i think is a, an amazing song but the story behind it is just super fun <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Ya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So I yeah, have basically like Mel and I just went back and we just like wrote and recorded that song. It was just like a really, really fun thing to do. And then, yeah, there's the song Murderata, which is from that split with Feeble Minded. And I ended up using that, that title, which is like a completely made up word for like that Murderata project. But yeah, I think that that pretty much like sums up the era of up until basically you joined the band. Uh, I guess there's just legacy. Just just before I I uh, I came in, I guess legacy's like the the last thing because this legacy's like early two thousand five. So I kind of just I I got there right after. Okay. I think so. That would be the. the yeah. Only, so legacy. The only thing I think of. So. Sorry. It'd be the only release I can think of. That's uh. That's missing. Yeah. So legacy was actually. At first, those songs, well, for one, I wrote that stuff what what I was thinking was going to be a completely different project. When I was working on, uh, it was, it was, and, and if you listen to Legacy, it sounds, doesn't sound anything like Fuck the Facts has done before. Yeah. Um, but I didn't end up being, and I was just like, fuck it, I'm just going to use this stuff for a Fuck the Facts release. And it was first on this split. Oh, yeah. It's like a four-way split with, uh, what is it? Narcosis. Narcosis, Midget, Midget Parade. Parade, Archer. Yeah, yeah. It's the inside. You can kind of see. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool looking cover. You got Legacy on there? Yeah. Yeah, this is like, I just had this old like Atari computer, like MIDI to write all this shit on. And me being me, I was like, well, fuck it. Like, and especially we were touring and it was like, I gotta, you know, and this is where this whole, like this guy is born. This whole like leg we call it, like the legacy bird because this is kind of where that came from and we still use that logo. I got these they got these samples from like some old like Alcoholics Anonymous tapes. Really simple artwork there. And this is actually, I think the, there's Felix. You remember yeah. Felix? Where is he there? Yeah. It's Felix. Um, this is the only, this is the only release that uh, Marc-André Mangeon is on as the bass player. Yeah. And uh, Tim Olsen as the drummer. Yeah. So Matt, Matt left the band. Uh, Dave Menard was still there. Though I guess Dave played on this, so yeah, Dave Menard. So Tim left the band, Dave replaced Tim, Matt left the band, and Tim replaced Matt. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, and yeah, Legacy. It was really cool. Like I think I think the song that came out of this is Dear Shit Book. Like that's. Though we played this a bunch. Oh, we yeah. played Horizon a bunch. Horizon into Deer Shit Book, we played a yeah, bunch. Yeah. Our Americans, I had to fucking use a Dr. Rhythm to, to, to get 
to sequence all the fucking samples live. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to, like, because we didn't play to a click. No. And it was just kind of like we had to fucking listen. Yeah, and I had, like, that old bass amp up behind me. Mm -hmm. like, samples blaring. Yeah. And I had to, like, press, like, yeah, this song. It worked, but if you if if I fall off, then everyone's fucked, which happened a few times. It, this is a fun song. This is like, it's one of those songs that's super fun, and it's it's literally one riff the entire song. Yeah. Like, besides that little bass lick there, like you could probably play this song with like four frets. It's such a simple song, but it's it's great. It's all the magic around it. Yeah, I. It's and like I did a bunch of vocals, like all those kind of distorted vocals are me. Because I had recorded this as like what I thought would be a different project, and then when we decided it was a fuck the facts thing, I I still kept the vocals that I had done for it. But yeah, yeah I guess that makes sense. that's the that's the last thing we did. Like Macan de Gaimangeon was on that, uh, and Dave Menard, and both those guys left. And I guess that's when you joined on guitar, and Steve joined on bass. Yeah. Around two thousand five. Did Steve join at the same time as me? Can't remember. Maybe maybe a, a bit, bit after, yeah. but I don't think you ever played shows with Macalgue Mangeon. Uh, no. Or if I did, it was like one. Why do I have a memory of playing a show with him? I don't know. I don't think you did. Yeah. Like that was like those guys were kind of getting out of it, and yeah. like at that time, I remember like that was the thing with like Mel and I. Uh, oh, I like this song too. Short-term go goals, long-term disappointments. That's good. I like. I like. Now yeah, we should bring this back. J Jesse Cameron, play. beep beep, beep beep is right. There's a lot of fucking beeps on this thing. Yeah, Chase was wondering like what we what uh, were you using. I have this old, this old like Atari computer, just like vintage MIDI. I honestly I don't remember it, what the fucking program was called. It was probably like you know really early version of Cubase. Kind of sounds like the Locust, yeah maybe. Why did I stop doing vocals with the fuck the facts? I think just because my vocals were bad. I think like when I did when I did the uh, the solo stuff, I got to a point like if you listen to, like the really early solo stuff, uh, my vocals are pretty rough. Some points where I was listening back, I just didn't really know at all what I was doing. But later on, it kind of like I I found my vocal, my voice, um, and then I guess when I started playing shows, I just. It wasn't the same, like doing it live as doing it like, I don't know, in the basement. And, and I just kind of like got, I guess, discouraged and just stopped. Yeah, vocals are fucking hard. Yeah. Like if, when it's not your main thing, like, because you got to spend time on it. Like they don't just like. They don't just appear like you have to fucking yeah kind of but i range. i did them for a while like even even when mel joined the band and we were playing shows like i still did some like high like kind of just like screamy backing vocals yeah, but yeah. i think as time went on it just didn't feel like you know and, and i guess like first like the bar was getting raised as a band it just didn't seem to make sense like yeah. My vocals weren't where they needed to be to kind of like be there, and it made more sense to me just focus on guitar. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, some fun stuff. 
like this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Should we should we jump into Stigmata stuff, or do we want to? I think we might want to keep it for the for next time. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, how many? Like, you know, if people want to know anything, you got any questions about stuff? Because, yeah. yeah, I don't think we haven't we haven't mentioned this yet, but we're we're gonna do another one of these next month, right? Yes. Sorry. It's, this is the perfect time to mention it. Yes. Because next month we're gonna do one one in February, and it's gonna mark uh, fifteen years from when we first. From, or from when we entered the studio to record Stigmata High Five. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the idea is that we're going to do something similar to what we did uh, with Plan Noir So I, I, I think we're yeah, probably going to go through the album and uh, we got like, we actually have pictures and videos of, of, of that recording session and stuff like that. That would kind of mm -hmm. be cool to, to look at. After all these years, you can, you can look how much facial hair I had 15 years ago <laughs> and how fat I became. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, and GFK. Oh, yeah, we played a lot oh, of shows shit. with GFK back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, these Stigmata. guys were like everywhere, yeah. like in Quebec. They were, they were doing like a lot of shows. Like they had a, a, a really decent following. From what I remember. Um, but yeah, so I guess the the idea would be to kind of uh, stop yeah. at Legacy and, and kind of take it back uh, next time, maybe a bit more specifically to, uh, in regards to Stigmata there, but we could still talk about other shit around it. But Stigmata? Yeah, I mean next time. Not now. No. <laughs> I'm, well, I mean, unless someone has a specific question hey. at this at this time, I don't mind talking about it. But since we're gonna yeah, go, if anyone if anyone wants like has some questions or wants to yeah go more in depth about something, I, like at least now, I feel like even I understand the beginning <laughs> of this band a bit better. That's the thing, like, because honestly, for me, it just it just kind of like happened, right? I never actually sat down and was like, "How the fuck? What's, yeah, how did this all happen?" And it just it, it it gets lost over the years too. Like even when you think you know how it went, as soon as you start looking back at it, you you start doubting yourself, and you're like, "Wait, is this right? Is this how it went?" Kind of doubting your own fucking little history. Mm -hmm. but it's been yeah uh, it's been a lot of years so yeah it's been a lot of years and i feel like the stuff that the, the stuff that we covered today is the stuff that like you never hear about <laughs> if you like if you follow the band at all um you never really hear about this stuff and just because we have it and, and even with like the stuff that we released like you go to our band camp page and all the stuff it like kind of ends at mullet fever right um, but I feel like it, like I, I, before the stream happened, someone asked about releasing some of the older stuff and I, it's definitely something that I've planned to do. I just never really, I just never really got around to doing it. So, but I want to at some point, I think it would be cool. It's definitely, it's definitely part of the history and like, especially now that I've listened back, I listened back to it. It's. I kind of realize how as as different as it is how similar it is as well you know yeah like I think like I was I was talking about like uh, um, you know some of the early songs which had like a really kind of like melodic metal like kind of like you know catatonia uh, paradise lost shit that I did back in like oh yeah the 90s right and it's always kind of been that same sort of idea. 
Mm-hmm. Any stuff with Brent available except Mullet Fever? I don't even think Mullet Fever is not even available. Uh, and no, that was that was pretty much it. Uh, the Wrecking EP or the Reeking EP? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the <clears throat> Stigmata High Five era. <clears throat> Yeah, the sound of your smashed. Oh, yeah. So the sound of your smashed skull. The sma- The sound of your smashed head. That that kind of links because the the song, the sound of your smashed head, is the only one that kind of carried over from, um, from Matt. the Matt era. Like you know, we ended up doing it on Stigmata High Five, but that's a song that um, that Matt and I had started writing. The sound of your smashed head. And actually, the song uh, La Culture du Fou is a song, the very beginning of it is stuff that uh, Matt, Tim, and I had started writing and it just never got finished. So there's always been a bit of a, a dive back into like some older ideas. But yeah. I think I think I think yeah I think we're probably that covers like the early history of the band. And next next stream we're gonna do the 15 year anniversary of when we were in the studio recording Stigmata High Five. Yeah, like we said, what, what we said, uh, end of February. Was, yeah, I guess the end in of February. Like that, we'll like do another weeks. stream for Stigmata High Five. And I guess, I don't know, we'll see. Like, this is kind of like a new thing for us. Like, definitely for me. <laughs> this well, isn't something too. that I normally do at all. I watch um, streams. I don't do them usually. I don't even watch them. So I have, like, I don't know. You know, the awkwardness and the confusion yeah. is real. Uh, we'll, we'll get better at this. Yeah. <laughs> or, um, not. or not. But, yeah. No pressure. But yeah, like uh, it's been a lot of fun, especially you know when we see people kind of showing up and interacting. It's it's really cool. And if there's something I don't know, you guys want us to talk about or you have questions about, like I don't know, yeah, ask because I feel like this is something that uh, we're down to do a bit more often anyway. Yeah, it, even like once the stream is down, like if you want to write up, like write us on on Facebook and shit. Like, don't hesitate. Like, even for questions that we can maybe uh, uh, talk about, like on the next stream and stuff like that, uh, or any suggestion, really, any input would be uh, valued. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I should mention one thing before I think before we call it is that. Um, we're gonna put this stream up, I think, on YouTube or something, right? Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll I'll probably edit it a bit, just like uh, condense it, and uh, we'll put this stream on YouTube, and I'll probably do something similar with the previous one for Plein Noirceur. Um, and we were talking about um, I'm I'm assuming you were going towards that uh, yeah. uh, small sampler, so just mm-hmm. just as a reference tool. We were thinking about putting uh, uh, a few songs uh, covering this era of uh, FTF on our website for a limited time. So if you'd like to, to really like listen to, to what we were talking about a bit more, since we you know we've mostly been talking over all that uh, all that music, uh, that you can go and check it out and listen back. So I guess once we upload the YouTube uh, the video on YouTube, we'll also uh, have uh, those songs on um, our website for you to download so that you can check it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, uh, that's kind of one of the things I have planned to do this weekend. I'm going to, we had like going through all of this stuff has just been, I don't know, it's been a wild past few days. I didn't know what it was going to be like, but um, bring back the skull logo. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, the skull logo. Probably like one of our most, uh, popular like logos of all time but honestly like one that i was never a super fan of but uh yeah yeah it was fun we have a lot of patches and there's a couple of tattoos of that logo 
but yeah, what I was gonna say is, yeah, I'm gonna put together a little sampler so that people that are interested can actually download the songs. We're just gonna make it like a free download that you guys can grab and listen to some like super vintage uh, Fuck the Facts, which is me playing, you know, guitar and doing my best <laughs> to do all this stuff. But I, I don't know, I think, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. And, you know, if you're watching this, hopefully you think it's kind of cool as well. We'll get that up when we get the uh, the stream online. <laughs> Are you talking about face down and shit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many. Yeah, memories. we had a lot of. That that would be a relapse tour, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy ass relapse tour. It was Minsk, Faison and shit, and um, unearthly unearthly trance, trance. and us. Yeah. <laughs> unearthly trance are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were fucking. They were. Yeah, but we're. Uh, yeah, yeah we were the was, odd band out for sure. It was a weird tour. Um, it was a cool tour, but is it was mostly weird and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I think that'll be the plan. We'll uh, yep. we'll set a date, and in February we'll do a, a Stigmata High Five anniversary uh, thing stream. So uh, if you have any questions about that stuff, or it'll just be fun. It'll be fun just for us to reminisce about it. Yeah, and I have some. Yeah, like I said, like pictures and videos that are definitely going to be easy to laugh at, considering how we look. <laughs> And, and, yeah, and we I looked also, awesome. We might also have a few guests, so that that's also a cool thing. Yeah, we're working on some some special stuff for that. I think it's gonna be cool. And and Mel will be here. Yeah, Mel's gonna be here for that one. She didn't want to be here for this one, just like listening to me talk about myself for like an hour and a half or two hours now, probably well, I, I, more I, than that. I didn't want either, but I was kind of feeling bad to like, talk about <laughs> this shit. Alone. You have to. <laughs> You're the responsible one. <laughs> Oh shit! So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess we we'll wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. And, anything uh, else? I don't know. Yeah, if there's anything else, did everyone leave already? I, I, it's usually how I it think goes. we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Unearthly trance is great. Fuck the facts. Yes. Fuck shit tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh um, man we got like it, the, it's i don't know yeah the history is so long like of all the shit we've done you know even with like even with Bill and i being like you know 15 plus years now doing this together so many fucking crazy stories and yeah i don't know it's really cool i, I re we really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with yeah. us like it means a lot it makes like my friday night a lot of fun and uh i don't know yeah i, I never i never would have imagined you know when i was like that kid in my dad's basement recording this shit that i would be here now getting to talk to like you know all these people from everywhere yeah ftf is for posers i only listen to my old shit as well i just keep the band going and make everyone else happy <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think we're I think we're good. I'm gonna. Yeah, probably gonna hang out. Uh, hang, hang out and uh, <laughs> losing my English. Fucking head out. There you go. That's what I was looking for. See how comfortable yeah. we are with this. It's fucking amazing. It's easy when you play a show on a click track, and when the show's over, you just get up and leave. It's a bit more awkward on a fucking stream. But yeah. Yeah. Well, like Tobon was saying, thanks uh, to everybody. Thanks for uh, showing up to the streams and supporting us. It's pretty fucking awesome. And we'll let you know uh, when the next stream is. And hopefully we'll see you then. And that's pretty much it. Take care, everyone. See ya. Thank you.
worth a thousand words, so I take a deep breath. My words can describe a billion pictures to their fullest depth. Exhausting my vocabulary, creating imaginary worlds that represent my experience, so let the instability infer. Words are my weapons, words get my point across. The word word is cliche, word up now, word is my bond. I lust for new definitions, increasing my human abilities to baffle the casual listener while boosting the not ability. The points to express my ideas, the medium doesn't matter. This isn't about grindcore, hip hop, musical disasters. This is all about poetic license. So fuck your ideology, fuck your facts. This is all about my inferior complexity. Mullet fever, she's got mullet 